Um, welcome to our channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Kendra Abbott. My husband is John Abbott and we are uh, nature photographers. He's an uh, entomologist, I'm an ecologist, and we love uh, nature photography. So um, the last video we did was on how we set up our DIY trap camera. And this video is gonna be more about the um, intricate pieces of how we uh, put the trigger together, what are the, all the little components, how do we house them, um, and also how do we take apart those Vivitar flashes and put them back together into those Tupperware containers. So if you didn't see our other video on how we set up this trap camera, I will uh, link it. Actually, I think it's going to be on this side. I don't know. One of these sides, I'll put the video. And um, so I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, comments, put them below. And if you could like and subscribe, it encourages us to make more of these videos. So thank you. The trigger itself uh, is another DIY uh, situation. This is the passive snapshot sniper that I'll show you in a little bit, but I just mounted it uh, in this um, Tupperware container. I've got a, some desiccant in there. Looks like it needs to probably be switched out. And then I've just plastic welded some PVC onto the end of it um, and kind of created more of a snoot so that it can be more directed. So I don't want things in this particular setup triggering this that are off real far to the left or the right. So I wanted to mention the Snapshot Sniper as a passive infrared trigger it is a super inexpensive DIY trigger that you can use with uh, SLRs. And and this is the this is the trigger right here, this little guy. Well, that's the sensor. Oh, that's sorry, that's the sensor. That's the passive infrared sensor. And how do you turn that on or off the whole thing? So there's a switch on the back here. It's very tiny sensitivity uh, knob up here. Requires just a small, uh, one of these small little uh, batteries. How does the sensitivity knob work? Yeah, you just spin it, or you can use a, like a screwdriver. A to screwdriver, spin it. A Phillips head screwdriver to spin it. Uh, exactly. More or less sensitive trigger. Correct. For smaller, larger things. This can be programmed with a pickaxe um, kit, the board itself. You can do different things with it, but you can also use it just really right out of the, the bag like this with its default settings. It comes with a Fresnel uh, wide angle lens that it just attaches with the screws to the board uh, like this. And spreads the beam out, makes it as wide as possible. Sometimes uh, I like to uh, put a snoot on this to kind of focus uh, that uh, beam more on a specific uh, spot. Um, and so what I do is I just use Tupperware containers like this. This is a Sistema. Um, again, I like these that have this gasket and basically clips to help kind of keep things weather sealed. And uh, I just, uh, let's see, uh, I think out in the field on this one, I have the, the uh, I just mounted the uh, pass the, the trigger, the snapshot sniper into to this. Fresnel lens on the other side. So basically you have something like this. Uh, and then the back, uh, you, uh, and then I put on the bottom here the cabling coming out. And on the back, like with most of my, uh, on the back, like with most of these kinds of things, I've just used a piece of small uh, wood, take two screws, screw this into the back, <clears throat> Uh, using holding it in place with with nuts on the inside and then I've got a quarter inch thread in the middle and that allows me to easily mount this on uh, you know any number of different uh, kinds of tripods ball heads and so on uh, and so you will have to do a little bit of soldering with the uh, snapshot sniper what I do is I just use a, a, a uh, eighth inch stereo cable cut off the male end uh, I will uh, strip that. Uh, there's instructions on uh, the wiring depending upon the model of camera that you have. Sorry, it goes right here. Um, and then, and actually, I'm just realizing you don't need to solder with this. It, it's got little screw anchors for the wires. So you really don't have to solder with this one. Uh, but then this 
uh, dangles out and I can connect my various cameras to it with this um, uh, because it's a, a, a generic um, stereo cable that I have everything kind of set up to work with. And it's quite reliable. There's not much going on there. Um, it's not very user friendly because you do have to do your own wiring. Probably not everybody's um, comfortable with that, but um, it is quite reliable. Uh, it's you, You'll get shots that you don't want that aren't in focus because it's just a beam going out, but um, it, it is reliable. I like it because it's reliable. Like It, it seems to be a workhorse. Yeah, uh, it's cheap too for and cheap. for DIY SLR camera trapping. It's a great thirty dollar entry for a trigger. And does it come with like a book on how to like connect the wiring to the trigger got, and how to make the sensitivity more or less? It's got PDF, uh, I believe it is, or web uh, instructions that you can get okay. off of the website. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, yeah, we can talk at some point about when when and why to use passive infrared versus active infrared triggers versus LIDAR triggers. There's a variety of different kinds of triggers that you can use out there. But for that particular setup uh, at the base of a tree uh, where things could be coming and going kind of in different areas, but I can still focus on kind of, I can be assured of being focused in the right plane, a passive infrared trigger works really well for that. The flashes themselves, uh, I'll show you more about those um, inside. But again, this is a Vivitar 2800 uh, DIY. Um, pretty easy to do, um, and um, talk a little bit more about that uh, in inside. So I also um, use, uh, for the flashes out there, we were using Vivitar 2800s that have been hacked, if you will. Uh, and this is what they look like. I have a bunch of these that I've made. Uh, what this is, is the, the flash has been um, cannibalized, broken apart via hack that I'll tell you about in a minute. I'll put in a weatherproof case. Uh, I'm using a little uh, piece of uh, rubber from the plumbing aisle as kind of a, uh, a focusing snoot uh, on the end of it. I've got my SAE connector coming out so that I can connect power to it. Uh, and then I get the same kind of a little piece of wood uh, bolted to the bottom using screws. So just one of these uh, with the quarter inch thread uh, in the middle so that I can secure it to whatever I want. What does the inside of this look like? Well, it looks like this. Might be a little uh, daunting to some, but actually it's a fairly straightforward ha hack uh, that I found online. I'll put a link to it below where you take these Vivitar 2800 flashes. I don't have one that I've have not um, pulled apart, but basically you can get them on eBay really inexpensively, like less than 20 bucks. And most of them have three boards on the inside. And the hack basically allows you, or shows you how to get it down to a single board, um, do a couple of other little minor tweaks to it to allow it to it stay on constantly, but you, but, uh, it's consuming very little power. These things, even with double A's, will stay on for a long time. And one advantage to them is that they are constantly on. So they are ready to fire uh, as soon as your camera triggers. Some flashes, you have to wake up first. And that, of course, is a potential delay. And then the way I trigger the various flashes they're not corded to anything um, other than a battery source. And I'll just input here again. This is dangerous to cannibalize these flashes. So only do it if uh, if you're comfortable with it and because um, you, you can electrocute yourself. So you ha be very careful. We're not advocating for doing that, especially if if you're not comfortable with it. So get somebody else to do it for you if, you if you're not comfortable doing it. You need to know how to discharge a capacitor, which we're not talking about in this video. So Kendra's words are, are wise. You want to be very careful with that. The way that these are all triggered then is um, just using an optical slave. Uh, this is actually the most expensive thing in this is by far is this uh, optical slave. You can get cheaper ones, but I find uh, these are really robust. Um, and, and do a great job. I can disconnect or connect them, just simple little connections there. 
Um, and you'll see on the inside then, you've got the optical slave and the uh, flash head itself are just simply glued into the inside there. Um, as I mentioned, I always like to serialize my equipment. I have a lot of these different flashes. And sometimes, you know, when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, things go wrong with them. So the fact that I know this is a number 10 flash, it makes it easy for me to throw in my bag, come back to the shop and, and, and figure out what's wrong with it. With, you know, not, if I've got three others in front of me, I'm not concerned about which one it is that was the problem child, basically. Um, I always throw a little desiccant again in here just to help keep moisture out um, and then seal it up. Um, battery wise, I mentioned uh, double A's. Uh, if you're traveling light, uh, you can just, this is just a double A AA battery pack that's weather sealed. I can plug it into the um, SAE connector there. And then what's nice is I can just plop, I got Velcro on top or Sherlock on top uh, so that it can just stay right there like that. Nothing draping off, really easy um, in terms of uh, deployment. But I can also, uh, to, to make it go longer, use a battery pack like this, either directly or with an extension cable. Uh, this is what I showed in the field. This is a D, uh, D battery carriage. I can use C's as well. So um, that's how the battery uh, side of this works. So the case for this is just a Sistema Loctite piece of Tupperware again uh, that I've just um, added the various pieces to that. So this transforms into this. The way I mount these lighter weight flashes or a sensor or lightweight things like this for for this uh, camera trap photography, uh, a lot of times is using these ultrapods. These are just fantastic. They're lightweight. They're multifunctional because they are basically a collapsible tripod that you can, you know, put on the ground. Um, you know, you can use in different ways. It has a nice, fairly robust uh, and uh, ball head on it, uh, but. What makes them really nice for camera trap work is that you can put the legs back together. It's got a nice little groove there where you can mount this onto tree limbs really easily using the Velcro strap. And if need be for bigger trees, we've added Velcro to some of these to make it even longer. Uh, so you can just have the, the uh, have it wrapped around a tree. It fits nice with that groove and then the Velcro holds it in place. And then uh, as long as whatever you're putting on there has a quarter inch thread, you've got a ball head built in there to, um, to, to manipulate it the way you need to. They're nice little ball heads, but they can't take a ton of weight. So yeah, this is, this is not for mounting Cameras. an SLR. This yeah. is for mounting lightweight uh, equipment. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that in-depth look into our camera trap setup, uh, our DIY uh, only if you feel comfortable DIY, <laughs> please don't electrocute yourself. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, or if we missed something obvious, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts um, and what you would like us to do next. We have several other setups. In fact, we've already filmed another setup that we have that's a little bit more off the shelf and not as much, uh, you know, taking apart flashes. Uh, but it's still a DIY in that you pull, you know, triggers, receivers, and um, create your own flash and uh, trigger system. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, like, subscribe. It really makes us want to uh, make more videos when you do that. So, thanks so much.